Hello and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 220 at scavengerlife.com. And it's another episode from Europe. We are now in Barcelona, Spain. Yes. Um, after having spent three weeks in Amsterdam. Yes, and we had quite an eventful day and night and day getting here. <laughs> yeah, we chose to uh, take a train down to Paris sleep over in Paris and then come right. here kind of instead of just hopping on an easy jet or something. Well, and the funny thing too is the reason I kind of decided we we could do that or should do that is when you take a train from Amsterdam to Barcelona, you have to change in Paris, but it's two totally different train stations that are like across the city. So you're kind of like you know, it's it's going to suck to coordinate that on one day. It's a really long day of traveling. Yeah, either you're, you're going to see overnight or you're just, it's going to fly. There's right. There's no sense in uh, doing a long train trip like that. Because it, anyway, it'd be too long of a day anyway. Because it's a it really be, long day. Uh, but that's what we did. And, you know, we're talking about traveling, even though this is a podcast about eBay. Uh, but so we want to tie it into scavenging. Yes. And I guess, you know, we were, is last night. The, the plan was that we would get into Paris at 1, have all day and all evening to just kind of enjoy Paris. Yeah. Uh, we've been there it's before, but not a whole lot. Right. And then fall asleep is wake up and leave. The problem was is that, you know, we were on that train actually where there was that terrorist uh, attack, I don't know, a month ago or something. Yeah, it's the same route. So tensions are really high and... The train got delayed because some guy was in the bathroom and said he had a bomb. I think he was just a crazy guy. No not, bomb. Not on our train. Right. It was on a train like a few hours before us. And then like this entire station, it was Rotterdam, shut down. So we didn't so, get to Paris until... Like 4.35. 4.30. And then so we go out to eat. The place we wanted to eat wasn't <laughs> uh, actually open, even though the internet said it was. And it's just kind of like the day, you know, the our evening in Paris yeah. wasn't what we were expecting. And so we were kind of bummed, and so we thought we'd take a walk. Yeah, so basically, like, I had planned all this stuff out on the internet. And I was like, this is what we're going to do. Have it all planned out perfect. Yeah, like, and I'm just like, this is how it's going to work. We're going to do this. We're going to go here. This will be at this time. You know, I'm like, because we only have one night. And... None of those things worked. I was like, wow. So I was feeling kind of like bummed. I'm just like, oh. And so we're taking a walk. And Paris is a nice place to walk. We're just in these neighborhoods. And we walk by a grocery store. And we just kind of wander in. And we're like, why don't we just buy some sandwiches, just some <laughs> grocery store food, take it back to our hotel and be and just done. Just chill. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we did. And it was a nice night. Well, what was funny was... We were in the grocery store actually buying stuff for the train ride the next day. We were like, let's just buy some snacks so we have food, whatever. And you're looking at the food and you're like, let's just get dinner here. It's going to be so cheap. We're going to sit in our hotel room. We're just going to chill out. And I, and I was like, that is the best idea. Like, it made yeah. me feel so much better. Like, it sounds so silly, but you're just like, you're not going to spend money. Barely any, you know. And you're just going to go relax, yeah. you know? So as scavengers, I feel like that's kind of what we have as a, as our lifestyle helps us in every part of our lives. Yeah. Is that you can turn an event that doesn't come out to plan, you can just turn it on its head right. and just make it happen. And so it wasn't the night of Paris we had, had a wanted, but it turned out okay. It was fine. It was actually, yeah. honestly, really, like, I felt like it was so much better. I was like, yeah. this is all I want to do. I want to spend no, I want to spend a dollar <laughs> fifty on a sandwich and just, like, chill out. Yeah. But then the other thing I wanted to talk about was, though, you know, that evening in Paris just reminded me, you know, we were staying in a hotel next to the big train station. Yeah. And basically, it's like, if you've ever been to, it's New York, it'd be like staying, it's next to... Grand Central Station or Madison Square Square uh, it's Garden. No, you know what? It, it, it wouldn't even be like that because that might be nice. It would be like staying near Port Authority. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, There's it was like just one industrial. Night, like... But you know, the hotel was cheap. I guess my point is, is that that's the other thing about being a scavenger is that it's about time. So, like, yeah, you know, you can of course go and scavenge 
at like a you know a fancy Goodwill or at the easy Goodwill store and try and find stuff. But it's never really going to be that good of an experience, in my opinion. Yeah, it's scavenging is only good when you, you can take the time right. to really go into corners where other people aren't. Right, it's going to, and that's when you find the deals. That's when you find the incredible stuff. Yeah, you know, uh, and it's the same way when we, you know, are out when we travel. Travel. It's the same thing because you're like, we have days where we're just like, let's go to this neighborhood, you know, and you said. When we got on the train, you heard other Americans, older, like, retired Americans, and they're like, we've been waiting so many years to do this well, trip. she said she's been planning this trip for three, three years. years, and she had it all planned out, and they were there for, I think, only ten days. It was, like, two days in Amsterdam, three days in Paris, like, four days in Germany, and, but you could just tell she was just ragged, you know, because... Yeah. That's when you're just kind of skimming along the uh, surface. You yeah. Know? If you're kind of parachuting into a place, you're able to, like, go to a couple yeah, tourist, tourist places things. and then just be done. And, you know, you don't really get the experience. And I get it. People, it's it's about money. And, yeah. You know, who has the time. But really, I mean, it's, it's choices, you know? Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for me, my thing, too, was, like, when you're in a place like Paris, which is, like, the most romanticized city on earth. I mean, you say Paris and everyone, uh, you know. And I'm like, we have to have this, like, in my mind, in the back of my mind, oh, I want to have, like, a nice night out in Paris, right? Sure. Like, there's that pressure of, right. like, when you're traveling, you know. And really, you don't have to do that stuff. Like, if you, if you're, like freaking out over those details and stuff it's like just do whatever you want yeah. like we were walking through neighborhoods in, in paris and we were looking in the garbage because we were seeing things that people were putting on the garbage <laughs> there were these ladies finding these scraps of like silk fabric yeah, in the garbage we, we weren't the only ones yeah. the garbage. and i was like those are my people yeah. like those ladies are like what i'm so happy to find you right. know and so i feel like you can travel in places and be a scavenger and still be yourself. You know what I mean? Sure. And last night to me, I was having a little bit of a, like a existential crisis where I'm like, aren't I supposed to be like doing something else here? And it's like, no, right. you should be doing exactly what makes you feel happy right then. Yeah. And that was buying a sandwich and chips and like sitting at our hotel yeah. with like the windows open. Like there are all the trains going by. Yeah. That's great, you know. Yeah. It's fine, but uh, yeah. So you know, we're now in uh, in Barcelona, and this is we're going to begin our week of work. So this is why we have been. This is why we're able to come here to in Europe is because of this job. Yeah, and so this is going to be the long week. It just and this always it reminds us is why we live our lives as yeah. eBay scavengers. Is yep. because we don't want to do this kind of work week in and week out. Because it would it's be, brutal. It would be very tiring. It's so you know? brutal. And, and, and it's true for anyone that has a job where it, you're expected to be there. It's 40 or 50 hours a week and it's challenging and, you know, yeah. pressure is on. So, uh, But it's good to do because, you know, it uh, keeps it fresh. Keeps So when we go back and we're just like... A listing on eBay. I'm going to be so excited. Well, it's crazy because we haven't even started our job yet. And I'm like, I really miss home. You know, like I, I'm like, I really want to get back, you know. Yeah, well, so like. We will. So this week is going to be pretty killer. But then we can go home and, you know. And live the life Have our little created. life. Yeah, yep. exactly. All right. So let's talk about our numbers for it's this week. We do this every week on Trash Elf Radio. Um, Don't embarrass me. Okay, so our numbers, it's this week. I mean, again, uh, we've been traveling. We have, uh, you know, a handling time that is longer than a normal. But it's funny. Our sales have been steady. They've been kind of low, but steady. So we made about 1200 bucks this week. Whoa. You know? So really, like, that's amazing to me because that did not it did not feel like that yeah you know we sold a lot of small kind of cheaper items yeah like under thirty dollars like 15 oh to thirty dollars we we're selling books for like 8.99 i'm like really but please? it's good patches 
So if we sold uh, about 32 yeah. items total. Yeah. And, you know, our average sale price in our in our flagship store was about $42, and in our second store is about 27 26. Yeah. 26, the so. problem with the second store, too, is, and it, we've talked about this before with that low average price sold, we have been going through those bins of death. And there's some just low price items in there. And they're cool and they're fine, but there's so, a lot of those little things. So it's when I hear people comment on the blog about mm-hmm. they aren't, it's making as much as they need to or their sales don't feel good. I just always wonder, and that's why I always ask people what their if numbers are, like if, what their average uh, selling price is. I mean, if your right. average uh, selling price is twenty dollars twenty five dollars i mean <laughs> yeah it's gonna it's tough to make you know thousands of dollars on ebay like it, you have to sell so many items i think that's why when it, you see people that post its numbers and they're making you know it, it's fifteen hundred two thousand plus dollars a week it's because they always have they always have like a high price item or yeah. a, a several of them that sell for three hundred, four hundred dollars. You know, right. it's a good to try and mix that stuff up. Yeah, you know? and I think also with our second store too, like um, I was hesitant to list high price items on there because I didn't have a reputation yet. I'm starting to get one, right. so I think I can put higher like art sure. and you know stuff like that. So that's been part of it. It's like we're up to five hundred and sixty items of like not very high priced items over right. there. So, but I think too, it's another. You know, it's maybe for people who are still it's new. It's about gaining that confidence. I mean, you know, right. it's not easy. Like, oh, just go find items that sell for four hundred yeah. dollars. I mean, <laughs> it's not easy. But that stuff is out there. Yeah. What it takes is being willing to take chances. And then doing the uh, research, right. that's the big one people don't realize. And then having the, the, the strength or it's whatever to like put a high price on it. Yeah, exactly. Some people just don't, you know, they're like, who's going to buy this from right. me? Right, a lot of, who's I, only, buy it from I me? only bought it for $6, you know, whatever. I'm going to know that. Okay, yeah, so, <laughs> oh my God, what's going on? That's the voice that people have in their head. Yeah, but the thing is, too, with high prices, you can always do make offer. So you can see what people are willing to pay, what you want people to pay, what you're happy with. Like, I I got a necklace that sold last night. I think I paid 3 to $6 for this necklace. I was like, I'm putting it up for over $100 because I think it's worth it, and I like the look, and it's a vintage look, and blah, blah, blah. And someone gave me an offer of seventy five. I'm like, yes. Yeah. And you know, and that's something that I, if I was a running store alone, I would have never have known that that was possible. That would people will pay it's fifty dollars plus, plus yeah. for it's for costume jewelry. Oh, yeah. You know, we're I, learning that together. I always saw it's like that was a bad word, like costume yeah. jewelry, meaning like, like it's, it's fake, like it's cheap plastic toy stuff. Yeah, but it's not. It's yeah. actually people pay a lot of money, like. Even if it's plastic, you know, right. people it, will pay because yeah. it looks good. Yeah, and, there's you know, a there's a look. I mean, it's so interesting. That to me. piece that I have, um, I can't tell if it is vintage, but I have a feeling that it's in the vintage style. Um, and still, someone was like, "I like the look. It's, I want it. It's seventy five dollars. It's chunky. It's chunky." So we also sold the. We're, we'll go into some of the things we sold. It's this week that we thought was interesting. We we sold a briefcase. I yes. really love to sell briefcases, either hard shell or soft shell, just because you know why they're very a useful item. You know, these are yes, well made items that people uh, look for and then they uh, use. And we had this. It's leather, it's briefcase up, but we had it up for about $135. Yeah, and we had been, low offers forever. We've been getting low offers the past several months. You know, give it to me for $25, give me for yeah. $50. Just like, you're and we said me. no because we know the price of it, and someone just bought it outright. Even though I had best offer or it's make yeah. offer, they still just bought it. They bought it outright. And, it's and cool. what's great about that briefcase is that was a, it's a Bally briefcase made in Switzerland, gorgeous leather. It's more like a bag. It's like a bag. It's not like a hard right. shell. Yeah. It's like a soft shell. And I found that under a pile of junky luggage, yep. just in a pile. Yep. Nobody was looking at it. Yep. It probably costs less than a dollar, a dollar or so. 
And you're like, this is this is like a designer high end just sitting, you know, in garbage. Yeah. And I love that. I love that find, you know. And we sold it for 135. Now I think I had it up for higher, but our store is on 10 percent off sale, so it was yeah. a little bit lower. But I was like, yay! Yeah, I'm so happy. This is another piece that we sold, which I also found amongst junk. It's a vintage depression glass, the Vaseline glass they call it, where also called uranium glass. Where if you put a black light on it, it like glows. Um, it's from the 30s. It glows like a... Uh, a it glows like neon. A greenish color. Yeah, like a green. It, it is a green base right. too. So it's got that green glow. And um, what's funny is I just saw it on the shelf um, and I was like, that looks like Vaseline glass, but I'm not sure. But it's cheap enough. It's like a dollar. Uh, I'll grab it. And um, it was. I shined a black light on it, and I took a photo of it like that, and it sold for $45. Yeah, and, you know, and this is stuff that we would have never have known to even look for when we first started, even our first couple of yeah. of years. I mean, these are things where as you're doing a research, and you learn about this stuff, yeah. and it, you see a videos on a YouTube. I mean, who knew that there was a class that glows in the dark. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it, I didn't know about this. I, I learned it through my mom because mm. she was into that stuff in the early eBay days, like the two, early 2000s. Um, but I, for the longest time, I wouldn't touch glass. I wouldn't touch ceramic. I wouldn't, because I didn't want to ship it. Right. But now I know how to ship it. I'm like, right. I could ship that. And the cool thing is we found this at a uh, at a new a thrift store that opened up kind of in our area. And yeah. uh, we love going to it. It's run by this, this like, couple. They're really cool. And their stuff is just so cheap. And yeah. they're just – it's almost like just a permanent kind of uh, a yard sale. Yeah. A lot of just junk that isn't worth anything. But the great thing about that store – it all looks like garbage. Not garbage, but you know, it's, it's, it's junk. junky. Yeah. Okay, but and you kind of are like get annoyed at me because I'm standing at the glass and ceramic shelves, right? It's shelves full of that stuff. I don't get annoyed. No, but but no, I'm saying because I take so long at that shelf. I love it because I look at every item. I have found I think it's like four or five things now on yeah. that shelf, like those those uh, Princeton University things that yeah. was on the shelf. This other like little thing that I sold this week for thirty bucks that yeah. was on the shelf. I mean, we love going to places is like this where the people who run it don't really know the value of anything. But they don't care. It's all just the same thing to them, and they just kind of group things up yeah. by uh, shapes or right. colors. You know, not it's just... even. They don't even group. Sort of, kind yeah, of. They do. You know. But but everything's like fifty cents. A dollar, right? You know, and and it's good. It's for them because they probably didn't get it for anything. So yeah. it's all just money. Yeah. You know, it, I just love that ecology. You know, yeah. everyone's happy. Everyone's getting what yeah. they expect out of the deal, yeah. and uh, it's fun. And also, we love those places because it's a challenge. You know, like when it I go to a, a Goodwill, everything's very oh, well God. organized. Everything's well priced, you know. Everything's like, from Target and Walmart. Everything's been through hands yeah. that un, that understand how much things are worth. Obviously, even in a goodwill, things slip by, yeah. and people can find the cool thing. But I love going to the place where the independent place where the, yeah. where you have so much of a chance to find something cool. Yeah, because because. Those are the first people to get it right. because this is – they actually run it through – it's like a nonprofit, like a church thing. It's like a church thrift store. You know, they get a box right. and they put it on the shelf. Right. Like there, there's no other filter. And so we're the like, first people to see it, which is like a lot of times I'm just like, yeah. oh, yes. Yeah. And no one else has seen it. It's the kind of place too where who knows how long they'll be open. You yeah. Know, I don't know if – if it makes sense to them or not, but while it is, we'll enjoy it. Love it. it. So this this next one is all you. Uh, we sold uh, this handmade vintage yeah. antique, maybe hamster yeah. cage. We sold it for a hundred dollars, and we were just at an auction. Yeah, and it's one of those things where, like, you know, he put it up for auction. Nobody it wanted it, and I was the only person that you bid got on it for it. like a dollar, right? One to five dollars. One to five, because five is the opening. Sometimes, Sometimes it's one. I don't know. It could have been five dollars, but I sold it for a hundred. And I looked at it though; it's so cool. It's yeah. like you can imagine a grandpa in the fifties yep. uh, made it for his grandson, and it's got like a handmade 
carved the hamster wheel. wheel and uh, and like chicken wire on the outside right. that he like you know nailed yeah. to the edges like when, when when i saw it like you you bought it right i'm like what the hell did you just buy what are you, like you always buy like wooden boxes and i'm like oh god another one but this piece was so cool we're like this is handmade this is true like americana like primitive i mean it might not be that old but you know, it's got it's that like look. The 50s, yeah. Like someone's gonna either use it, I don't know, or put it on a shelf, and you're like, that thing's awesome. That's why I priced it so high. I think I right. priced it one twenty five, and we got an offer of a hundred, and we were like laughing. Yeah. We're just like, what? Yeah. It's a it's a cool piece. Yeah. You know, you can't. That's one of a kind. It's I just cool. live is for that kind of stuff. You know? I know you're really into the wood boxes. It yeah. drives me crazy because they're a pain in the ass to put on the shelf and they take up all this room and then if there's one in the back you have to like move all of them but for a hundred bucks yeah <laughs> i'll take we'll it take it uh okay customer issues so this week obviously we are not uh, shipping anything so we yeah. can't have problems with that we've had two buyers who have uh, wanted a a refund after yeah. a, uh, after understanding because we always send people a note after they buy this is going to be shipped, you know, X Next. day. And they're like, oh, I didn't see that. So anyway, we always say one out of 10 people, you know, we sold 26, 32 things and only two people. So it's, you That's know, not bad. still it, doing good. It honestly, like, it feels like a lot more. Like, I'm glad you're like, it's two people. I'm like, it because it's so, well, such a bummer. <laughs> we do get people who are like, it's going to be that long? We're like, yeah. They're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then we get some people who are like, great, have a good trip. Yeah, like they're, they're just like, whatever. They don't care. So yeah. those are our issues. Um, yeah. So what we did this past week, I mean, we don't have to talk a lot about it. We we went to that big flea market. You saw the video, hopefully. I we did post a video. In Amsterdam, yeah, the biggest flea market in, in Europe. Europe. Yes. It was cool. Uh, yes. We got to hang out. It's with our friend Mark, and we he got to kind of see. He actually, I think, made – a little audio documentary of us uh, buying and selling stuff because he's a podcaster too. So we spent about $100. We could have spent more. I think this is, was the best time we've ever been to there. I mean, there was so much good stuff. But I, and this was me, I was like, I only want to yeah. have stuff that fits in one big bag. Because it last year and the years it's before, we had multiple bags. But, I mean, we yeah. always you filled up one bag and it was fine. It's a heavy bag already. I weighed it. It's like 38 pounds. It feels heavier. Yeah, man. it's heavy. I mean, I, I, I was trumping 40 around, pounds is a lot. I was tromping around Paris. It's with a big army bag Double, full yeah. of, like, I mean, carpets. And all this now, if we were leaving right after <laughs> yeah. I Holland, uh, I'd be like, we're buying more. Yeah. But... Coming here, two trains, is just like, no. Like, the fact that you can carry 40 pounds already. Mm -hmm. There were, and, and we, and we you know, gotten, we had a couple of people that listened to the podcast who are from Holland, and they emailed us. And unfortunately, we didn't really have time to meet up with them in person. I'd, I had I'd wanted to meet them and maybe go to some places and Right, shop. right. It's with them and maybe even enter and view them, too. It didn't work. But I think also when we're at that flea market, I think we've just been here or been in Holland enough. I'm starting to, to see what things are possible to scavenge, to, to, yeah, to buy. Yeah, I feel like if we uh, lived in Holland, I'm feeling yeah. better that we could actually make a, you know, that we could yeah, actually sure. buy stuff. But like, stuff. so, so how? Do, my thing is like, you'd have to be there for like a, a bit of time, and you'd have to figure out if people are going to buy from you and you can ship from the Netherlands and people want to pay that shipping, you know, right. that that's an issue. And if you're selling to people in Europe, are people in Europe like, I'm not going to pay that price. But people in the U.S. are like, yeah, that thing's really cool. <laughs> I'll pay a hundred bucks for a hamster cage. Um, I don't know that that's the question. We found great stuff. I think there's a lot of stuff there that people undervalue, like, Hardware hooks, drawer pulls—like right. people looking at us like we're crazy. A lot of Tur I mean, uh, it's rugs. Yeah, Turkish rugs. If we lived there, I would I'd buy, buy that stuff. Like so crazy. many rugs. There are rugs for it's fifty dollars, twenty dollars, even a hundred dollars that we could have sold for 
five hundred dollars or you know? more. Yeah, just because they're so close to Turkey, they have a lot more of that yeah. stuff. So I was like, wow. So the other thing we did, it's this week. Yay! You, you can see it on the a website. It's a long time. Uh, it's project here. We call it the Download All Project. Uh, if you go to the website at scavengerlife.com. There's a button up top, and I even highlighted it in yellow because I wanted people to know that now it's ready. It says download all episodes. Yeah. And if you go there, uh, this is the problem we were trying to solve. We would have people that would find out about us. They would try and download us. And it's all free. You can go onto our uh, YouTube page and just play each one by themselves. Yeah. Or you can subscribe to us in iTunes, but iTunes only holds our last 20 episodes. Yeah. So there's no way to easily download from first to 220 now. Right. So we basically have done a little special project, and Ryan actually did this. Yes. She spent the time, and she made folders of all of our podcasts in order. Yeah. So I I do want to say this. I didn't just make folders. I had to go in and actually I renamed all the episodes in the, let's get a little technical here. When you bring MP3s into iTunes, you can see it's like scavenger life. This is the episode name, blah, blah, blah. Well, I, though that naming convention was not standardized from day one. So I needed to do that to 215 episodes. It, and so <laughs> I did it, and uh, we had our friend uh, who's a listener, Brian Blake, helped us, and he downloaded them, brought them into iTunes, and was like, a whole bunch of these have misspellings, so I had to redo it. Yeah, I mean, actually, we give him all the it's credit, because it was actually kind of his idea yeah, to yeah. do it, and he, all, he helped us understand how to make this happen. Yeah, he actually and, talked uh, to me like, this is how you should name each file, yeah. and I was like, okay. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, you can go to that page at download all episodes at scavengerlife.com. And basically, this is the first time we're ever charging for anything. Yeah. So, we're charging $79. Yeah. Um, and you will get access to 200 and right now it's 219, I think, and episodes. We, and we broke them up into smaller folders. So, and you won't be downloading one big five gigabyte folder. Yeah, it's about folder. five gigs. We broke it up into episodes. Into 20. It's 20 episodes. 20 episodes. Basically, when I give you the link to go download it, it's on um, Dropbox. You will see there's a bunch of folders that have 20 each. And yeah. you'll be able to download those. Just because five gigs can take a long right. time. So if you want to do it in So sections. that way, if you just have them, you can put them on your devices yeah. you can play them offline all that stuff but anyway that's just if you're into that kind of thing if not all our podcasts will always be free they're yeah. on a youtube they're on itunes they're on our know, website all that stuff so it's just more convenient if people want to grab them put yeah. them on the on their device and we had to buy some storage space to handle all this so uh, yeah anyway, five gigs is uh that's it okay so uh some news uh anna who is a listener who lives out in california she uh went to the ebay yes. celebration the 20th the 20 year I'm going to link to her uh, comment. She actually wrote a really cool, uh, like, kind of story about her experience yes. there. Like a breakdown of all her, her... Which I think is neat. Yeah. She also reminded us that there's a link. You can watch the it's video of the a CEO talking. Yes. And, and of there's other talking. videos, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So we'll link cool. to that if you're interested. I mean, yeah. you know, when I'm, like, on uh, online, and I'm looking at different people talking about it. People seem kind of optimistic that maybe yeah. this might be a good change for eBay. Yeah. So it, it's, you know, it, you should we'll go see. Check it out. I mean, we'll, we'll see yeah. what happens. And I mean, it, it, it it's nothing but good to have, you know, the CEO have a positive message and actually be talking to people in an audience, yeah. like a live audience. I will say that, you know, if you see a lot of that, like, oh, eBay is going to tank and like, this is yeah, the year you know, eBay is going to yeah, eat it. They always say you that. know what? eBay grew, I think, 6% is last year. Wow. Which really? I guess compared to Amazon did like 20%. Oh, wow. But 
only in this business would people think growing only six percent is, is like, like doom. Is like this company's going under. You know, <laughs> you know what? It's so crazy. Yeah. Anyway, um, something else I saw. I got an email from PayPal or both. Yeah, we got it. this email. And I guess because PayPal's splitting off, it's now a new company. Maybe yeah. they're doing things is differently. It was interesting. It just told us how we did for the a month, and it right. broke down in percentages. Our sales. Yeah. So so check it out. And this is these are metrics that we've tried to do ourselves. It said twenty one percent of your sales were international sales. That is correct. We've always said it's between twenty five and thirty percent. This so. was lower. Obviously, we've had a pretty low month. But um, another interesting. Uh, number was 45% were mobile sales. And that's something that people have said too, that mobile sales have become like half or more. And, um, and I feel like that's higher than uh, normal for us. I don't know if it's because we've started to to, to, to have no template. Yeah. I don't know. And then they said 94, now this is true, we knew this, 94% were new customers, not returning customers, right. which we already But then that know. brings up a question I always ask. Yeah. So 6% are people who had come back and bought from us. Or repeat, who are they? Who are those people? Like, why isn't there a button I click and it yep. shows me? Who bought from me right. again, and what did they buy in the past? Right. Because I'd love to send those people like, like a little note. It would note. be such a simple thing because eBay has that information. Right. Clearly, PayPal has that information. If they were like, "Hey, this person bought X item from you," whenever you're like, you know, if it was a year ago, maybe I'm not recognizing yeah. their name or their address. Now, the thing for me about these numbers. And how eBay is announcing how they're doing all the metrics. These companies, PayPal and eBay, eBay, have existed for 20 years. And it's taken them that long to give us these numbers. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. You know? You're like, oh, you're actually giving me metrics <laughs> yeah. after 20 years. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, why is that? You just said, well... You know what I mean? Uh, it could just be because... You know, certain companies have like their core is business. Like, yeah. they know how to like run this auction site, but they don't yeah. know how to do analytics you know, analytics well. And it's just not what they want to do. They don't want to hire a team. Maybe and, they, and that's why they farm it out to therapy, the om, and omniture, or omniture, whatever. and all that junk. But it's interesting because eBay has all that data, but right. they they haven't given it like a. An interface for right, you know, and, and you know, and that takes a lot of right. work and a lot right. of skill. So I don't know. I mean, yeah. again, this is where we're talking way out of our yeah, sure, our comfortability. Like we <laughs> we don't know about all this stuff so much. So, but that's what we hope. Yeah, but the good thing is, I'm excited to see more numbers like this. I'm yeah. like, yeah, that's what we've been yeah. trying and, to figure out. And I know? don't want to have to pay for it too. Yeah, I, exactly. I know you can get numbers through third parties, but you yeah. know, I'm already. You know, eBay's my partner in this, and I shouldn't right. have to pay more its money to get access to, to, to that data, data you know? to my data. Right. right. Uh, okay, things we learned in the comments. It was a good week. We enjoyed reading people's comments. I feel like there's some uh, kind of a group of uh, new people popping in, yeah. which I enjoy. Yep. Uh, there's a guy, Scavatar. Scavatar, yes. I believe, I believe he's from Massachusetts. Oh, you, uh, yes, yes. And he's been around for a, a while, though, but he... Uh, he pops in and out of the He comments. talked about... He told the story about he was going home, and I guess he was... Uh, uh, it's filling up. I hope I say this uh, story right. And the gas oh. station was changing, I guess, their brand. So they were selling all their old inventory, and he bought it all for, like, $400. So it was just, like, so boxes funny. of candy and, like... You know, just new and packaged stuff. Cans of oil and, yeah. and you know, uh, stuff to put in your car and probably windshield wipers. It, just all that, all that junk that the you FBA see. dream. Yeah, <laughs> right. So it's interesting. I mean, you know, he's an eBayer, but he's like, maybe this will be my entrance into FBA, or maybe I can do it on Amazon. I don't know. I mean, on eBay. Yeah. So that's what I live for in the comments when people can come in and share an experience, and then. Follow up. I I, I want to hear. Yeah, how did it go? Yeah. Week after week, how it yeah, goes. Yeah, me too. And and I actually love that about our blog because I feel like people 
know that everyone's interested. Yeah, and so people they will wanna, follow up. People want to know the uh, numbers. Yeah, too. we want to so, know the, the like, details. If you got you know a thousand package of gummy bears, like, like how'd that go? What'd can you, do? you sell that stuff? How I mean, much? do people want to buy it? I yeah. mean, I was thinking, you know, like for that kind of stuff, especially things that have an expiration date. Just like do it in bulk, like sell just like a huge hundred packets of gummy bears, you know, and maybe there's ten of those or something. Yep, yep. that's that's really smart. But you know, yummy. But something like I learned when I went to that hardware auction, oh, where it was like a hardware store. The problem is, is like, God, it's just such slow. It's profit, you know. If I'm buying a bottle of of something, like yeah, the oil for a dollar, and you know, there's a hard price on those things right. because that stuff is still being made right and you can buy it from walmart and every place yeah. sells in amazon so you have to compete on that price i'm gonna make what three dollars yeah. or something but then I mean, it's like it's like the whole idea is you shouldn't have just bought 10 you should have bought like you know thousand, but, but, right. it, but then you're like uh, it's just such a different business that's model that's my... hard to get my yeah. like i like finding the hamster the old the hamster, hamster wheel, wheel. For a dollar or five dollars and sell for a hundred. Like, it's I the like that. slow dime. Yeah. You know? That's true. So now we are going to answer voicemail questions. You can always call us um, on the voicemail line, and the phone number is 540 407 8486. It is just voicemail. We do not pick up. You have three minutes to leave a question or a comment, and. Um, Someone this week even calls back and leaves a longer message. So he knew that yep. he had to call back. Yep. So I'm glad we tell people because sometimes people get cut off and they don't know it. Yeah, and so. we can edit some comments together. But, yeah, people start leaving multiple. Like, this isn't like don't leave a novel. But, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Hi, this is Sylvanette Williams. Um, I have a question about sales tax because it leaves me a little confused at times. Um uh, and I'm calling from South Florida, and um, we have um, sales tax, of course. I believe it's 6%. I did apply for a sales um, tax certificate. Um, some of the estate sales that I go to, they ask for a copy um, in order not to charge you any um, a sales tax. But some of the thrift stores, of course, you got to pay sales tax um, in order to purchase your items. So how do you guys handle sales tax where you live? Um, I don't want to end up having to um, double pay sales tax. Um, uh, and it leaves me a little confused because I'm not sure what to do. Um, I did receive a notice, my first notification about sales tax, and I called in and did the automated system um, and put in zero, zero for our areas because I haven't really – bought and sold anything to charge sales tax. But if you're going to sell charge sales tax via eBay and you've already purchased something from a thrift store where you've been charged sales tax, so they're getting it like twice. So if you guys can just go over this and explain it to me a little, I would really appreciate it because it, it, it has me very confused. Thank you. Okay, sales tax. If you collect sales tax and you have your reseller's license um, from your state, you should be able to show that. Like you said, you can show it to auction houses or estate sales, and they will not charge you sales tax. I'm pretty sure that at regular Goodwills and Salvation Armies, yeah. that's also the case. Uh, if you do have one, you should be able to flash it and not pay sales tax, and you're collecting and sales I, tax. And, and I guess if you are have like a cashier that doesn't understand, you can actually get a... A manager. A manager, because I'm sure there's lots of people with those licenses that, that buy comment. from Goodwill. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, Jay and Ryan. This is Maria from Wisconsin. I watch or I listen to you guys all the time, and I wanted to call and thank you for just making my day go by quicker and giving me all the great information that you do. Um, you've saved me a lot of time and money. So I had a quick tip. I um, save money on bubble wrap because I go to furniture stores. In true scavenger fashion, I go to the back. They have a recycling dumpster, and they have some really nice heavy-duty bubble wrap there, and that's where we get ours. I also had a question. What is your weekly routine um, now as far as like listing and sourcing go and um, thank you guys for all you do 
Um, so that is an awesome tip about the furniture store. I had actually never thought of that. And there is a like a retail furniture store in our county. I should just go look at their dumpster. Yeah. Absolutely. Or maybe even just go in their front door and, and ask. just ask. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's funny too. Yeah, people give lots of good tips. Like when guys like go to your local it's bike shop yes. because they'll have crazy Those boxes weird shaped boxes you know what there's a bike shop in town oh my yeah. god people what am i yeah. doing yeah well we don't really have a problem with finding that's true stuff but those are great tips so the other question was about listing and sourcing right i mean i think it's going to be different for everyone and maybe other uh, sellers that have been around for a while would understand this i think once you kind of get up and it's going everything becomes kind of like yeah I don't know. I don't it's like say, a part of your day. I don't it's want to say it's haphazard, but it's 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 not like we have like a schedule, like a job where 8 to 9 we do this <laughs> and 10 to 12. And That's why we don't have <laughs> I mean, it's more just like, you know, we'll get on a a listing. Oh, I'll, I'll get know, on a roll. I'll marathon. be like, I'll be like, just shut my door, leave me alone, give me a cup of coffee and that's it. And then we'll do that for like four days straight and then we'll get bored of that. And yeah. then, then it will just scavenge for like a week, you yeah. know, yeah. where every day we wake up and go somewhere new. It's just, right. we do, it's whatever it feels like that's still keeping the business going, right. but yet is invigorating to and us. And interesting. Like you mix it up. But I, but I do know when we were starting out new, yeah. the first 12 months, 18 months, we definitely were a little more like... Okay, we yeah. have to get inventory up. Right. Like, we're yeah. going to do work every day, four hours a day, yeah. do this. Yeah, you know? we were like mm-hmm. that. And we would be like, we have to go to the thrift store. We right. have to go today. We have to go tomorrow. Right. Like, we were very, and that was the beginning. But now, yeah. you've woven it into your right. life. We just are always doing those things, right. you know? And so, I think that's kind of the benefit of this. And I'm sure, I'm, I would love to hear how other people who have been around for a while, you know, they're a lifestyle. It's just kind of become something. It, yeah. It's it just, do you don't time. even think about it. Yeah. It's just, it's happening, you know? Hi, I'm a long time listener and I really enjoyed the podcast. Uh, thank you so much for that. I uh, just have a quick question. I know you guys source at a different uh, places, but on average, where does your high profit item comes from is it through auctions or thrift stores or garage sales flea market thanks jay <sighs> okay i would <laughs> say our highest in our highest items comes from estate sales if i had to say i would say see it's funny you said that because i would say auctions Could but i auctions. think they're e- i think yeah. they're even yeah, I mean, it's, we pay the most at those places for higher profit right. items. But I would say, you know, estate sales, and I noticed there are a couple people on the blog who also seem to find a lot of good things at estate sales because that's where you're really getting stuff at the source. Yeah, you know, the someone, house it was in. Someone just died. Yeah, everything in the house is being sold. You're the first person that gets access to that stuff. Right. So you know, it's not always the the cheapest, although. It's going to be, it's cheaper there than it's ever going to be. Right. You know? It's only going to go up from there. And, you know, you can get really interesting things. Yeah. And, you know, the great thing about estate sales is like, you know, it's only people in that neighborhood yeah. that come. So you aren't having to compete right. with everybody. It's almost like also from the same source is where auctions get their stuff a lot of times, like an estate. Um, but the problem with auctions is, you're surrounded by other sellers. Like, though, that is like a magnet for sellers. Right. Estate sales, okay, sometimes. Well, but... the, the cool thing about estate sales is, like, there's a price on it, and that's the price it is. It's and an auction. and yeah. if you get there first, yeah. that's the price you're going to pay. And that price can actually go down. When you're at an auction, the price starts here, and then yeah. it can go, it only goes it up, only goes you up. know? Yeah, that's and a good so, point. Uh, yeah, yeah. But at auctions, too, if you're there and, you know, you're into something and no one else is into it. I mean, we've got stuff for dirt. We've got incredible rugs. Things. I've gotten rugs for five dollars yeah. each that I've sold for four hundred dollars. Right. You know, so, that's an auction. But both of those things, auctions and estate sales, is the kind of world where you're really getting into enjoying buying old stuff. You've got to have like an interesting knowledge of all these things. Uh, you know. Uh, 
it's it's not always the easiest just to go there and not know anything. You have to be able to identify the stuff that is uh, valuable. Right. Hi, Ryan and Jay. This is Lonnie from Tucson, Arizona. Um, I love your podcast. I've been listening since about May, and I actually found you on Instagram. There's a huge um, Instagram family of people who – Thrift for cheap and uh, and sell really high as um, as you both do. Um, so I'm very grateful for one of my followers on Instagram who posted your podcast. I have since posted um, a little uh, photo with your podcast, a little cartoon, and um, have told everyone that if you're selling on eBay, they need to come listen to you. I've learned so much. Only been doing this since about May or June. Um, I am a uh, part-time eBayer. I would love to be a full-time. I work full-time, unfortunately, but while I'm at work, I dream and always and thinking about what I should be doing for eBay. Um, I loved your last or your podcast before last um, when you were in New York and you um, had that interview. Um, I bring my items. I bring my small little. Um, easy to post items to work. Um, my thrifting and scavenger life equation is that I work full time, I eBay part time, I thrift um, after work when I have an hour in between to pick up my son. I post at night, I post during work, I post during my break. I I'm, I find the time um, when I do. Um, we uh, have a spare room, so I store all of my items. In a, in a spare room. Luckily, we have a large enough home where I'm, I am able to store some of the stuff. I only have about 9,900 items in my store, but I make it work. Um, my husband um, would always complain about all the junk in uh, within the home, but I've been saving up my um, eBay sales, and I've showed him the account, and he has come around. I have about 1,100 saved up since about July or so, and I told them it's just stuff that I find for the for cheap. I sell it. People buy it. Um, I've taken a lot of your advice: buy low, sell high. I get all of my items from the Goodwill outlet. I am so cheap. Um, I try to have at least a 15 to 25 dollar return um, to make it worth my time. But in the beginning, I was super excited for any sale, but at this point, I've um, just done some research on the items. I research as I buy. I just love your podcast. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Um, Just kudos. Love you, and I tell all my friends and all my followers to come follow you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. We enjoy that, and we hope other people, you know, we we play it because we want other people to be able to identify, you know, because I'm sure... There are other people out there that are scavenging and selling, but also work full yep. time. And all we can say is a week, there is rarely a week that goes by where we don't hear from someone that says, I just quit my job and I'm doing this full yep. time. We hear so it a lot. I'm not saying it's easy and I'm not saying like it's guaranteed, but if you want to live that kind of life, you can. You can. I mean, you, you just have work. to, again, do the work numbers. It. Yep. Yes, hello, Jay and Ryan. This is Don calling you from the Roanoke Valley of Virginia, which, if I understand correctly, you guys are in the Shenandoah Valley, so I'm just a bit south of you um, when you're in the States. (laughs) Anyhow, um, I have a quick question. I have a small eBay store. I've got about 200 items, and I have something that I never would have expected to come up. I sold an item to a man, or it looks like a man, out in the Midwest, um, it was returned as non-deliverable, as addressed, unable to forward. So I looked at his feedback. He only had a feedback of two, which was I was one of them. So I thought, ah, no problem. So I messaged him and told him what happened. And said I'd be very happy to just go ahead and send it again if you just give me a, an address that will work. We didn't hear anything. Um, so I sent him another message, and we are now a little over 30 days. I have heard nothing back from him. Um, I have his item. Uh, obviously, I've been paid, and I was just wondering. Uh, surely, <laughs> this is something that has happened to you guys at some point. And I was just wondering, how do you? What do you do at this point? What What would you recommend as my best course of action? I have no problem returning the money to him, um, but I don't even know if that's what he wants because I 
effort, really absolutely nothing. And also, you know, I want to keep straight with eBay, so um, I don't want to give him his money back and then have him turn up and get angry. Um, anyway, uh, that's the situation. If you could shed any light as to what you guys would do, I would appreciate it. Thanks. Bye-bye. You've done the exact right First thing. First off, Roanoke. Yeah, actually, I will say this. <laughs> I went down, I went to summer camp for like half my life down, not, not, not near Roanoke, about two hours from Roanoke in S southwestern Virginia, and we would fly to Roanoke to get there. Yeah. So I've been to Roanoke Regional Airport many times. A beautiful part life. of Virginia. It is beautiful. Okay, so you have done the exact right thing. You have messaged this person. You have tried to get in contact with them twice. Now it is up to your buyer to be responsible and respond to you. If they're not going to respond to you with the correct address, etc., there's nothing you can do. It doesn't yeah. matter if they get mad. I don't have a lot of patience for this kind of thing. Yeah. Here's the way it works. Remember, eBay is all about a paper trail. Yes. You know, it's in a, it's it's basically a big administrative <laughs> a system. So he buys it on yep. a record. He pays you. It's you uh, ship it. You know, that's on a record, too. It, it's on a record. It came back to you. It's on a record that if you try to contact him, yep. where are you? You know, do if you want this thing? Then it's just silence in my book. If yep. this person never contacts you, I mean... It, he this person dropped the ball like yeah that happened to us several times over yep. the years i mean there was a guy i remember because we love to see where people where they live uh, live he was in a trailer park and he bought like a a a military item and it came back to us and we never heard from him and it came back to us like 18 months later. Yeah, that's that true. was what was so weird right. about. I'm like, what? And is his this? I think his user didn't exist anymore. Yeah, it was like yeah. it was like he was just gone. I mean, sometimes, you know, so you're like people's lives and their priorities change. I mean, they buy something, they forget about it, they, they move. move, they lose their job. But something. I mean, ultimately the buyer does have a its responsibility to contact right. you. And so. you have done everything right. There's nothing else you can do now. Yeah, and That's and it. and I guess my point about the paper trail is that is why it's important to keep it all right in the eBay. Yes, its messages and keep it clean and keep it good professional because eBay yeah. will it look at that if that person is not going back to you. But if he emails you in six months, then if you can deal, it's with it then. But uh, yeah, you know, so you're good to you're go. You're doing good. Okay, guys, that is the end of this week's episode from Barcelona. Um, you can always check out our blog at scavengerlife.com where we, you know, that's where the conversation yes. happens after the podcast. You can always leave a question or a comment on something you heard or read on the blog. Um, the phone number is 540 Four zero seven eight four eight six, And we post an episode every Sunday night, Monday, a morning, depending on our schedule. This one might be a little tight because we're doing stuff. Yeah. Uh, this week, because we're working, probably on Wednesday, there'll just be kind of an open, it's question and answer post. So no more interviews for this week. Uh, but we'll be back next Sunday. And you can always subscribe to us through iTunes or through it YouTube. And now we still now we have on the website you can download all oh, of our in episodes. one big package. And uh, we just want to thank you for sticking around. Bye. This episode is ending in three, two, two one, one. zero.